Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my students I hope uh, you guys are doing great and enjoying with my new and new real lectures and also enjoying the blessings of Ramazan Today we, our topic is Aristotle's defense of poetry Plato attacked the poetry and I have explained in my previous video lecture how he attacked it and what was the reasons So now Aristotle defended poetry and re, you know he explained and answer the allegations that were raised by Plato. Basically, Plato was the teacher of Aristotle. So Aristotle, as a student, uh, goes against maybe some uh, you can say against Plato and defended poetry. So before uh, understanding the Aristotle's defense of poetry, let's introduce the Aristotle. Let's introduce the genius. So Aristotle, born in 384 before Christ. Okay, he was born in 384 before Christ and he was ancient Greek philosopher like Plato. And he was the pupil of Plato. He was one of the good students of Plato. And he is famous for foundation of literary criticism. The subject we study in literature or linguistic students study and they know about the subject in the study in which we make criticism about the literary work. He was the founder of literary criticism, guys. And he was a teacher of Alexander the Great and he defended poetry and gave arguments in its favor. Like Plato gave arguments against poetry, he gave arguments in the favor of poetry. So opposite of it. And he is popular for his theory on imitation and tragedy. Through these theories, he supported poetry. I will explain them further in any other video lectures, so stay there. And he wrote famous book named Poetics. So he was overall a Greek philosopher and he was genius and he was the student of Plato and he defended poetry. So let's dig deeper. Aristotle's defense of poetry. So poetry is merely an imitation. That's what allegation made by Plato. Right? Plato made this allegation and what he responded on this repetition uh, on this allegation indeed he says indeed poetry is imitation of imitation yet it gives us more which is actually absent in reality so according to plato the literature or the poetry is merely an imitation is merely a copy but uh, aristotle said it's not a co copy it's not only the copy but it is like more than reality which is not present in the reality it could be present in literature or poetry poetry does not only tell what has happened but can also guide us what could or might have been happened i mean the stories we watch the, for example let's suppose poetry it can it has the ability uh, to imagine things sometimes which are absent in real life so it is something more than the copy it is something more than imitation and poetry is not only the copy but productive and creative copy of the world. I mean, uh, in poetry we see the imitation of things but these imitations are in a creative way. Sometimes they are not resembling with even the real world. I mean more than reality they sometimes convey. Plato says it takes us from reality. So according to Plato he says poetry takes us away from reality. But Aristotle had the view that it gives deeper knowledge of the world. So it has two different mindsets uh, are you know in the process he admits poetry to be an imitation yet claims it to be more than it so this is the overall point raised by aristotle that yet it is the imitation of an imitation but i have explained the copy of the copy in my previous lecture you should consult their video then you will be able to understand this video so before watching this video go to my previous video the Plato attack on poetry and then watch this video then it would be beneficial for you the next point is poetry does not provide moral aspect to society so according to Plato he says that poetry does not provide moral aspect to society there is no benefit of poetry morally for the society okay poetry has no beneficial aspect for the society according to Plato instead it corrupts the society by by feeding and charging them with emotions Plato he was a Greek philosopher and uh, you know in philosophy there is no space for emotions but only for the logics. So he says 
uh, that in, is corrupt the society by feeding them and charging them with useless emotions. However, Aristotle had the point that basic aspect of poetry is not to teach. So he says this is not the responsibility of poetry to teach, but to give aesthetic feeling to its readers. So basically, the uh, you know purpose of poetry is to give aesthetic feeling and not to teach or not to preach morality and also gives purification by arousing the feeling of pity and fear. You know, this is what we call catharsis, the purification of emotions. For example, when we watch a tragic drama, we try to get purified, we get relaxed. So this is the basic function of poetry to relieve you from the excessive emotions. So according to Aristotle, uh, this is not the duty of poetry to teach morality. So he rejects this argument as well. The third argument raised by uh, Plato is poetry is considered to be inferior due to imitation factor. Okay, uh, you know Aristotle uh, was against that this is not only the copy but highly creative copy or superior than history because history only tells what happened but uh, poetry tells what can, what could or what might have happened. I mean the power of imagination and creativity is present in poetry. Next point raised by Plato against poetry was poetry yields unreliable knowledge. So according to Plato, poetry is something which has no basics with the reliable knowledge and which is uncertain, which based on the uncertain knowledge. Sometimes, you know, when we watch uh, any poetry, for example, this poetry has unreliable knowledge like there are imaginative things and which are unreliable, which is sometimes fake, which is sometimes wrong. So he says it based on unreliable knowledge. So uh, what uh, Aristotle says in this response, he says it is more philosophic and higher thing than history. So he says this has the power of imagination and which is something more reliable than anything else in the world. And feeding of emotions. According to Plato, poetry feeds the human emotions and corrupt society. Yet Aristotle claims poetry to be having the ability to arouse the feeling of pity and fear with God in mind to purify it. He gave the theory of catharsis just in the response of uh, the attack. He tells that when you watch a tragic drama, it, you get pure. Your feelings purifies after uh, arousal. Yani, uh, I mean, when the feeling of pity and fear aroused, your, uh, your feelings get purified, you get relaxed. So this is what he says the basic purpose of uh, poetry. So thank you. It was all in this video lecture and I hope you guys have understood the whole uh, defense of poetry. It's a little tricky. I know uh, you will find it a little bit difficult. You can ask me questions and I will make videos on these questions as well if uh, there would be any need. So thank you. Allah Hafiz. God bless you.